am back again. Um, I'm sure many of you have tried using like CDs or prisms or maybe some crystals to put in front of your lens while filming or doing photography to create interesting reflections and things like that. Um, or even you haven't done it yourself, I'm sure you've seen many others do it. So today let's try and create kind of a similar effect in post in DaVinci Resolve. So um, yeah, let's get started. So here in the edit page, this is the uh, clip we'll be using as an example today. So let's just click on it and put the playhead over it and go into the Fusion tab. So uh, if you haven't used Fusion before, basically this is just the input and this is just the output. And right now we haven't got any effects in between. So the main effects we will be using today is the mirror effect. So if you kind of uh, press shift and spacebar, this little window will come up where you can search for your effects. So let's do the mirror effect and we will hold shift and then we can drag it and put it in between these, uh, the input and the output. Or we can double click to remove the links and just drag the input into the mirror effect. Now if we want to see uh, whatever is going on in that node, we can just click on it and drag into one of the monitors or we can just press 2 to show it on the second monitor and 1 to show it on the first monitor. And that's uh, 2 and 1 not on the numpad but on your, your keyboard itself. So as you can see right now, the mirror effect is happening. You can see your uh, our picture is like reflected. Uh, but the main effect we will be using today, if we click on the mirror node and go to the inspector tab, instead of individual or rosette, we will probably be using the kaleidoscope effect, which of course you can change, kind of tune the angle or the corner size. Now what we want to do is to put this mirror effect on top of our original image. So what we're going to do is create another node, uh, shift space bar and use the merge node. There you go and just press add. I'm just going to place it right here and we're going to drag the input or the original image. Just right click on your mouse, drag it in and use it as a background or basically it's going to be on the bottom and the effect of the mirror effect here. So basically this image with the reflection, I'm going to right click here and drag it, drag it into the merge node and use it as a foreground. So it's going to be on top. So right now if we have a look at the merge node. Right now it's basically just this mirror effect or we can see it's just this mirror effect because the original image that's coming in is on the bottom. So it's being like uh, this thing is being on top of it. So if we go to the merge node and we reduce the blend, we can start to see the original image that's the background coming through, right? So basically if you put the blend to one, the uh, m image coming in on top, you're going to see it at 100%, so it's similar to like opacity in Premiere Pro or Photoshop or things like that. So as you start to reduce the blend of the merge node, you can start to see the image on the bottom. So we can control the amount of reflection. Uh, that's one way you can control it. On top of that, you can also control the blend mode. Like uh, in Photoshop, you know, you have lighting, soft light and screen and that kind of thing. Here, if you go to the apply mode, you can use uh, screen or you can use like all the other things, soft light and things like that. Normally I'll just use normal or screen. So in this case, maybe we just use screen and we can of course adjust the blend again, depending on how much of the, uh, the effect coming in on top you want to see. The next thing we're going to do is normally when you're holding your prism in front of the lens, uh, it's probably not covering the entire lens. So obviously the effect's going to be uh, applied in only on parts of the image, maybe the top left corner, the bottom right corner, or if your prism is kind of irregular shape, then it'd be like a different kind of jagged edges or whatever. So one way we can control where the prism is going to have an effect is to create a mask for the merge node. So to do that, uh, I'm going to shift space and use the polygon tool. There you go, polygon and just add. And now I'm just going to put it on top and then right click and drag it into the merge node and use it as an effect mask. So basically it's going to tell the merge node where to put this uh, mirror effect on top of the uh, original image. So right now my mouse, as you can see, is now across. So I can draw the mask wherever I want. So to zoom in, zoom out, just hold control on your keyboard and use the mouse wheel or you can um, move around by just holding the mouse wheel and just drag around without holding any keys. So let's say our prism is going to affect maybe this part of the image. So I'm just going to draw one point here, another point here, another point here, and maybe another point here, and another point here. So as now you can see straight away that the, uh, the prism effect, maybe I'll just increase the blend a bit so you can see it more clearly. The prism effect is having an effect just where we drew the mask just now, right? So if I drag the polygon to this uh, monitor, you can see that this is our mask right here. The white is where the polygon is being drawn. 
So right now the edge is a bit sharp. So if I go to the polygon node and increase the soft edge just a little bit, and now I'll try to play the clip. Now as you can see, the effect kind of blends together much more nicely. And again, you can go back to the mirror effect and kind of play around with the angle and the uh, you know the uh, amount of the side and things to get the your desired kind of reflections. And of course, you can add other effects on top of the mirror effects. So let's say we want to add a prism blur effect just after the mirror node, so we can you know the reflections instead of it being completely sharp and perfect, we can have it kind of like you know a little chromatic aberration on the sides, or maybe you can increase the amount of blur. So depending on the crystals or the prism you use in real life, you know sometimes the image won't uh, kind of be distorted a bit, or maybe the colors will have some color fringing and things like that. Of course, you can control it here. That's completely up to you. Or sometimes instead of the prism blur, I might use the zoom blur as well. So let's. Uh, Add a zoom blur instead, just to see what that looks like, and you can kind of increase the strength a bit. Uh, you know, change the position if you wish, and also you know you can just uh, apply any effects you want. Really, it doesn't have to be the zoom blur or the prism blur. You can also try other things as well. Now, just for the last thing, um, normally when you hold your prism in front of your lens is probably not going to be perfectly still like this. So obviously you can see right now our polygon that's creating the mask is perfectly still. So it's creating the uh, the effect just around this area right here. Now we might want to introduce like a kind of a fake shake so the the mask kind of move around a bit. So uh, let's let's have a quick look at how to do that. Firstly, I'm just going to add a transform node. There you go, and just add. And now I'm just going to disconnect the polygon going into the merge node as the effect mask. So I'm just going to double click on the line here, and I'm just going to put the transform node in between. So I'm going to right click on the transform node and drag it into the merge node and use it as an effect mask instead. And then drag the polygon node, right click and drag it into the transform node and use it as just a normal input. Now, if we drag the uh, transform node into our first screen, right now it's just exactly the same, right? But with the transform node selected, we can use the center to move the the mass around. So you can see when we move the mass around, the area where the uh, the mirror effect is happening or our mass is happening is basically moving around. So the effect will kind of move around with it. So if we all we need to do now is just introduce like a random effect to the the movement here. So in order to do that, it's not uh, that hard. I'm just going to reset it. You're just going to right click on this keyframe uh, icon here and go to the modify with and we can use either perturb or shake. Uh, maybe you just use perturbed in this occasion. And if we go into the modifiers, the perturb has been added. Now we can change the strength. So basically how much uh, it kind of moves around the strength and the wobble. So maybe you want to reduce that a little bit, maybe 0.3. And speed is the frequency, so how often or how quickly it shakes around. And again, these are all kind of values that is up to you really what, what you decide to choose. Uh, so if we play the clip right now, you can see that right now our mask is just moving around kind of randomly without us having to go in and keyframe every frame. So of course, if you really want like specific movement for your reflection, maybe you want it to move from left to right at a certain speed or things like that, you can of course keyframe it. But if you can't be bothered and just want to do it quickly, randomly, you can just add the uh, perturb or the shake modifier and your transform node will just be moving around randomly. Of course, you can, well, maybe the movement is a bit uh, too little, so too subtle, you can increase it to 0.7. And you see that the movement, you know, will be it'll be more now, so it'll move around a bit more. Okay, so once you're satisfied with all your effects that are all going into the merge node, so basically all the effects right now are just being combined in the merge node, right? So we'll just drag the output of the merge node into our media out. So that's where the uh, final result will come out. So now if we go back into the editing tab and try to play this, we can see our end result. Now of course this effect is kind of quite heavy on the uh, GPU, so it's going to be quite hard to play uh, live or play in real time, so you might want to like render it out for it to play smoothly or just wait a while until your uh, GPU kind of cache the effect. So right now we have this, uh, as you can see, this effect and the, uh, the prism is uh, moving around with our uh, random uh, effect that we put in. Now of course you might might not want this zoom blur, you might want to use the prism blur instead. That's up to you, so maybe the prism blur you feel might look a bit better. So I'll just uh, maybe just mess around quickly and something like that. Have a quick look. 
So it's, there's no right or wrong, of course. It's totally up to you which effects and things you want to combine and, you know, put in. And yeah, I thought I think it looks kind of quite okay. Of course, you can carry on messing around for hours and hours, uh, drawing different masks and maybe changing the uh, combination of effects and the angle of the mirror effects, you know, or the change from kaleidoscope to other things. But I'm sure you get the general idea from uh, the things we've done today. Okay, I guess that's pretty much it for today. Um, I'll see you around. Bye.